Nation of Fit in 10. Welcome to day 50. If you can believe it, we're heading into the teens tomorrow in terms of days left. We finished up the uh, third round, third round of scans, the second comparative scan. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, unfortunately <laughs> the scan results were not quite as good overall as they were uh, the, uh, the very first comparative scan. And this is usually the case. Typically, you know, we tend to get more, not to the degree that we got this time, um, but, you know, generally, you know, seven weeks in a row is a lot for people. So in the beginning, the motivation is a little bit higher. So we tend to see really good results. Uh, and then, you know, people tend to not drop off, but maybe they slip up or they think they can get away with more. Or they kind of, you know, test the waters a bit with, with, um, with, you know, some things that maybe they think they can get away with. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it is a long time, I think for, um, you know, having a, a level of daily consistency, like, and I mean consistency, I mean like bang on like every single day. Right. And I don't really know, and I'm not, I don't say this with any disrespect to anybody in this challenge, but I don't, I don't even really know if you know what it exactly means or what, when I say consistent and you think consistent, I don't know if we're thinking the same, <laughs> the same thing. Okay. So, um, anyways, this is a learning process and I can't expect you to, um, be perfect. Nobody's perfect. Uh, but, uh, you know, these final three weeks, you know, have that same enthusiasm that you did the final, or excuse me, the first three weeks. Okay. A lot can happen in three weeks. We know this because the majority of you got really great results in the first three weeks. And no, it's not a plateau thing. It's nothing like that. Uh, you're not going to plateau in three weeks. And plus your calories have changed and, you know, your cardio has changed and, you know, you learn how to, you've been training better. Your training is you know, your intensity is way, way more than what it was in the beginning. Uh, there's absolutely no reason for you to plateau. Nobody's going to plateau. So what do I expect to see from a lot of you on the final scan? Probably a great, a, a good improvement, probably better than what you did from weeks, you know, end of week three to, to now. Right? So, um, listen, 20 days, let's take advantage of each and every day, right? It's like you're building a wall or you're taking down a wall, however you want to look at it. It's a brick every day. And over time, you know, you may not think, well, I'll just don't worry about the brick for today or maybe not tomorrow, but you know, it is all about the accumulation over time, right? Or the other, the other analogy I give is you're digging a hole and you're digging a little bit every day, right? But what we don't want to do is fill in the hole, right? Cause it can get frustrating, especially if you dig and then you fill, then it can get very, very frustrating because um, you've done some work, but then you've done some, some things to, uh, to undo that, right? But certainly, you know, it's all about uh, more steps forward than taking steps backwards. And if you took some steps backwards, that is okay. And sometimes taking steps backwards is a way to keep things going over the long term, right? Whether you consider these breaks or what, what have you meant? They could be physical breaks, mental breaks. Um, you know, just on that topic, when you finish this challenge, you know, I do generally recommend that you give yourself at least, at least give yourself a free meal, not a crazy meal, not a 3000 calorie meal, but you know, a reasonable meal once a week, just to give yourself a break, you know, and you might as well make that social as well. Um, all right, so let's, um, there was one entry that got sent in today. Wow, one entry. Hopefully I'll get some more this weekend. So this person writes, this is under name, something specific you can improve upon for the following week. Be more rigorous with portion control. Resist, treat cravings. This person writes, I've seen impressive hypertrophy gains in my upper body through the program, but my lower body musculature hasn't developed much. I'm guessing I, prob I probably need to be more aggressive with my weight and perhaps 
overly cautious with lower body exercises, especially big compound exercises like squats and deadlifts out of fear of injury. I, I have some minor lower back and knee discomfort, struggling to navigate the limits. How much soreness is safe? I want to be able to do this long-term. I don't want to risk injury, but aware that this is probably limiting my progress. All right, so very good. Always think long-term. You always want to think long-term. Maybe the only time you don't think long-term, at least this was, I mean, I was even thinking long-term when I was young, but um, anyways, I don't want to go down any rabbit holes, but yeah, you want to think long-term for sure. Um, all right, so let's back up here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so you've seen, you've seen some good gains, hypertrophy gains, mus muscle gains in your upper body. You're seeing some development, but not in your lower body. So one thing I'm going to say is you want to get the most out of the least. Okay, now there's a happy medium with this. So what do I mean by get the most out of the least? It means make the muscle work as hard as it possibly can with the weight that you're using. So for example, you might be able to do a weight for let's say 10 reps and you're like, you know what? I could add um, whatever, another 10% to the bar. Let's use percentages. I could add another 10% to the bar, but maybe if you slow down your rep speed, okay, specifically on your eccentrics, and maybe if you think about squeezing the muscles at hand, squeezing your glutes, trying to squeeze your quads, uh, and maybe if you do something like a pause at the bottom, there are all these things that we can do to make the weight feel harder and take the physical resistance off of the body, okay? to take the physical weight off the body. So what my suggestion is here, and this, this is good for hypertrophy because hypertrophy really at the end of the day is not about moving weight A to B. Moving weight A to B is like a, a strong man. That's, that's what a strong man does. That's what an Olympic lifter does. Okay. That's what a power lifter does. But these are not activities where you're trying to build muscle. These are trying to get a, a weight from A to B. When it comes to hypertrophy, adding musculature to your body, it's all about making the muscle work as hard as possible. You know, and I mean, arguably you don't want efficiency. You want, you want inefficiency, right? You want to chase, you want to figure out how can I make that muscle work harder? And in our minds, we always think it's about more weight. Now you do need some weight. You need some of that mechanical tension. Okay, that has to be there. There has to be some level of, of weight. But again, it's that happy medium, right? So my suggestion is make yourself work harder if you're looking for hypertrophy gains. If you're looking for strength gains, if you're looking to be able to move more weight, that is a different story, okay? Although there is some crossover. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna say there. Um, this also might be just possibly genetics. You're going to have inevitably certain body parts that respond better than other body parts. Most people are like this. I'm going to say probably 99% of people are like this. You're going to find that you have certain body parts that just respond and grow and develop. And you're going to find you have other, other body parts that don't. Now, this could be part and partial um, out of the fact that you just don't connect to the muscle mentally as well. You know, like, so for example, a lot of people have a hard time, especially when they start training, feeling their lats, feeling these muscles back here work, but maybe they feel like they can feel their bicep working really, really easy because you can see it, you know, or it's a muscle that you use on a regular basis. Nine minutes. Um, so what do, what, what is my suggestion? Happy medium with this. Now, when it does, when it comes to compound movements, I am going to push you to try to push a little more weight. When it comes to isolated movements, one jointed movements, not multi jointed movements, okay? Bicep curl is one jointed movement, isolation movement, right? A tricep press down is a one jointed movement, right? Side lateral raise is a one jointed movement. A compound movement, like a press, is a two jointed movement, right? Shoulder, elbow. A squat is a two jointed movement, hip, knee, ankle. Um, so, would these. Compound movements, I would try to chase a little more weight, but again, you know, we want to be safe and um, we really, really want to hone in on our form. 
okay? So just be patient. Be patient with this. Um, but things like squats and deadlifts, I would try to chase a little more with these types of movements, with these compound movements, I would try to chase a little more weight, but never at the expense of full control of the weight. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest with you, training for hypertrophy is probably the safest form of exercise out of anything I think you could possibly do. I don't know about anything, but maybe it's definitely one of the safest forms of exercise. A hundred percent. It's it, it's always actually funny when people always ask me, do you think my kid could train with weights? I'm like, does your kid do anything? Like physically? Yeah, yeah, they play football, they play hockey. I'm like, oh my God. Those sports are way, 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 way more dangerous. When you weight train, you are in an environment that you can fully control. There's nobody, you know, it's going to blindside you. You don't have a friggin', you know, whatever, two pound, super dense piece of rubber flying through the air at a hundred miles an hour. You know, you don't know what, you know, you, you know what's coming at any second, pretty much. Okay. Unless there's like some crazy earthquake or something. Safest, safest form of exercise. Anyways, um, let me get back to your question here. How much soreness is safe? Okay. So really... This is not, I don't think you're asking the right question unless I'm not understanding your question. You don't need to be super sore first of all, okay? So soreness is really going to come from more than anything, a certain level of intensity and volume. All right, now as your intensity is, goes up, as the, the volume, you're not gonna be able to do as much volume at that intensity. Um, but if you try to keep the intensity high and the volume high, you're gonna get really, really sore. So really, it's the question is, is how much soreness is necessary? No soreness is necessary. You can still make great gains without any soreness. It's probably gonna have some level of soreness. And you know, I think that's normal. Um, the question is, is how long are you sore for? Really? So you need to look at your recovery. You know, how much sleep are you getting? You know, what is your diet like? Those are the two things that are gonna lend itself to your recovery. All right, my 12 and a half minutes here. Um, Let's get to the message of the day. I'll, you know, I'm gonna come back to this tomorrow because there's still more, still more I'd like to say on that. I kind of jumped around a little bit. On this day 50, consistency, this is the message of the day, by the way, consistency will knock the crap out of motivation every time. Habits, really I should write habits. Habits. All right, well, obviously what is habitual is consistent. Habits will knock the crap out of motivation every single time time you cannot rely on motivation motivation is never motivation is temporary okay and you're never going to gain anything of any great value out of doing something for a temporary period of time you need to be consistent with it you need to put uh, effort into it on a regular basis it needs to be scheduled it needs to be methodical and i will remind you there's a difference between uh, training and working out right? There's a difference between those two things, right? Uh, working out is just making your body feel like it did something. Training is having some methodology behind it, having some plan, long-term plan, right? And that's a really important distinction, okay? And this goes along with diet as well, having a plan, okay? Positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself, for the love of God, gives me gratitude, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya.